curbs for arrivals from at-risk nations from midnight. Airports get ready with new holding and testing centers. The new SOP includes test, wait for result and quarantine. Meanwhile, Maharashtra says that passengers from at-risk nations will have to undergo mandatory seven-day institutional quarantine. We have more than enough stock for boosters. Omicron specific booster shot is possible, says Serum Institute CEO Adar Punawala to NDTV. India's latest GDP numbers are out. GDP at 8.4% for this quarter versus minus 7.4% last year. Growth in all key sectors from last year. Mamta Banerjee goes national, now meetings in Maharashtra. She meets Aditya Thakre, also visits the Siddhi Vinayak temple. Key meeting between Mamta and Sharad Pawar on Wednesday. From Elon Musk to Sundar Pichai, shout outs for the new Twitter CEO at 37. Parag Agarwal is the youngest top CEO, beating Mark Zuckerberg. Hello and welcome to NDTV 24-7. I'm Rohit Wellington. Our top story amid global Omicron alert, Maharashtra has now introduced fresh curbs on international arrivals. Passengers coming from at-risk nations will have to undergo mandatory seven-day institutional quarantine and will be tested on three separate days during this quarantine period. Let's go across to Saurabh Gupta joining us for more on this from Mumbai. Saurabh, there are hundreds of passengers who may be coming in from these countries designated at risk. Have the facilities to quarantine them, have these facilities been arranged and to quarantine them, quarantine them for seven days, will that be a challenge? Well, you know, I mean, uh, what seems to be the plan is to keep hotels that are available nearby and also uh, keep some of the centres that are there nearby. Uh, you know, there are quarantine centers that Maharashtra hasn't really shut them down. They've kept them going, even though cases have been low, uh, fearing something like this. So the, they say that they have the preparations in place. In fact, the airport also has been told not to uh, sort of, you know, make arrangements. And the airport uh, authorities have also released a statement saying that they've made arrangements. But, well, you know, what happens actually, we will see only once passengers start coming in. But according to estimates, the number of flights that are coming in from these at-risk countries are coming in at at intervals. They're not coming in all at the same time. And also, uh, they have, uh, you know, the facility uh, that they've created is good enough to hold at least uh, the two to 300, 400 people at a, at a time. Uh, at least as far as the waiting area in the airport is concerned. Because they have uh, space at the airport and that space is going to be used. Earlier also, it was used for the same purpose. And what we're being given to understand, at least now, is that, uh, you know, uh, that these, these quarantine facilities that the civic body is already running in Mumbai, which they haven't shut, will continue to be functional. And perhaps what they will give, uh, you know, customers a choice is that if they want, to, they might, you know, again, uh, take over a couple of hotels and turn them into quarantine centers right. and uh, under medical supervision. And in that case, uh, we are also being given to understand that, uh, you know, those who choose to do that will perhaps have to pay, uh, you know, for those uh, that quarantine centre. But again, that is something that we are still waiting for clarity on. All right, Saurav Gupta, we leave it there. Thanks very much for joining us with those details. And the central government has issued new rules for international travellers, which are effective from midnight. Let's look at the details. International airports around the country lining up chairs, preparing to test hundreds of passengers at a time, starting midnight. No passenger can leave until their RT-PCR test result is out, which can take up to four to six hours. Anybody who tests positive will be shifted to hospitals and their samples sent for genome testing for Omicron. And the rest will be sent for a mandatory seven-day home quarantine in Mumbai. Oh, hi, Riggs. Country ke, uh, okay. RTPCR positive भी आती है, आएगी तो जीनोम सीक्वेंस की भी टेस्ट होगी। ओमिक्रोन का जो डर लग रहा है, वो होना नहीं चाहिए। हर एक पैसेंजर सेल डिक्लेरेशन देगा कि वो कौन से कौन से कनेक्टिविटी कंट्री में जाके आए हैं।
Chief Ministers of Delhi and Maharashtra, which have India's two biggest airports, have asked the center to ban international flights. भगवान करे कि ओमिक्रॉन वायरस इंडिया में ना आए अगर वो आता है तो एक जिम्मेदार सरकार होने के नाते हमारा फर्ज है कि हम अपनी सारी तैयारियां पूरी कर लें तो आज मैंने सभी विभागों के जो भी संबंधित विभाग हैं उनके साथ आ, मीटिंग की और उससे निपटने के लिए जो जो तैयारियां करने की जरूरत है उनका जायजा लिया इन डेली कोविड पॉजिटिव पैसेंजर्स विल बी ब्रॉट हियर to LNJP hospital now designated for omicron cases we have made special uh, preparation we have had the separate isolation ward treatment ward and at the same time uh, we are training our uh, staff to handle uh, with uh, such the cases uh, we have lot of international travelers so if any cases are referred to us to the loknayak uh, we can uh, handle such cases we can isolate them we can treat them we can uh, do the uh, gene sequencing uh, our hospital is uh, competent enough to deal with uh, such uh, different type of uh, uh, viruses delhi is beefing up health infrastructure 63000 beds creating a two month buffer stock of essential medicines a storage capacity of 442 metric tons of oxygen three refilling plants that can refill 2900 metric tons of oxygen the center has advised states to allow physical visits by state officials to homes of passengers from at risk countries for effective home isolation and to implement emergency covid response package with focus on rural areas and children and early implementation of sanction oxygen plants and cylinders drugs etc the center has also said that omicron variant can be detected by both rt pcr and rapid antigen tests The emergence of Omicron variant of COVID-19 has come out as a major challenge to the entire world and a grim reminder that the virus is still present and a threat to the entire humanity. And while the healthcare workers are working on war footing to prevent another wave of COVID-19 in the country, it is also a responsibility of the public to adhere to COVID-appropriate behavior. With camera person Sushil Rathi and colleague Parimal Kumar Sena, Maksh Dongre, Pandey TV. Now, amid talk of booster shots, CEO of Serum Institute of India, Adar Punawala, has told NDTV that if a booster dose is needed, the company has plenty of stock. He also said that uh, Omicron-specific booster shot is also possible. That's also the hope with uh, Omicron, which uh, you know is the latest variant of concern. We don't know how um, mild or severe it's going to be. Uh, the initial reports are that you know it's not. Uh, creating a severe illness but it's still still too early to conclude on that uh, uh, but today's vaccines that are licensed let me just uh, share that with everyone does provide quite a bit of broad protection against all these variants now specifically how effective covishield is for this variant like we had concluded uh, you know the 81% figure you mentioned for the delta variant now for omicron the tests are on and in about 2 3 weeks time we will know uh, at least the lab tests of neutralizing uh, antibodies etc to know and get an idea of how good the uh, existing covid shield vaccine is against that having said that um oxford science the oxford scientists are still working on and we hopefully will launch if required in 6 months a new vaccine which is directly um a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a vaccine which could be a booster dose which is specifically targeting the omicron uh, and other um the variants found on that continent the other big story india's gdp grew by 8.4% during the july september quarter of 2021 22 the growth though not so high as the stupendous 20.1% jump seen in the june quarter of the current fiscal is still in the positive territory for the fourth consecutive quarter the spurt in economic growth during the second quarter of the current financial year was mainly due to the positive growth seen in key sectors like agriculture mining manufacturing electricity and water supply as well as transport communication and real estate Moving on on the second day of the winter session of parliament the opposition walked out uh, uh, of the upper house after Rajya Sabha chairman Venkaiah Naidu said that the suspension of 12 opposition MPs won't be revoked as they had shown no remorse but in the opposition meeting to decide on boycotting the Rajya Sabha proceedings 
Trinamool Congress and Samajwadi Party were absent. Where does this leave the opposition unity? Arvind Gunasekar reports. Opposition parties boycotted the proceedings in Rajya Sabha and protested at the Gandhi statue over the suspension of 12 opposition MPs after the Rajya Sabha chairman Venkaya Naidu refused to revoke the suspension. If the members who have committed this sacrilege against the house, they have not expressed any remorse. I don't think the appeal of the leader of opposition is worth considering. I am not considering it at all. The motion was moved, it was approved, action is taken, it is final. This is undemocratic and autocratic behavior. Hai. आज हमने सब मिलके वॉकआउट करने का डिसीजन लिया वो यूनाइटेडली हमने किया है द गवर्नमेंट इज एडमिट इफ देयर इज नो अपॉलॉजी द सस्पेंशन स्टे फॉर द एंटायर सेशन जिन लोगों ने हाउस में चेयर की तरफ अटैक किया लेडी मार्शल्स को अटैक किया पेपर्स फेंके कॉर्डन तोड़ने की कोशिश की जिन 12 सांसदों के नाम उस उन 11 तारीख की घटनाओं में दिखाई दिए उन सब के ऊपर कार्रवाई करने की हमने अनुरोध किया सदन के सामने मोशन प्रस्तुत हुआ सदन ने मोशन को स्वीकार किया अ मीटिंग ऑफ 16 ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज इंक्लूडिंग द टीआरएस आम आदमी पार्टी शिवसेना एंड चेयर्ड बाय द कांग्रेस टुक द डिसीजन टू बॉयकॉट द राज्यसभा टुडे Trinamool Congress and Samajwadi Party kept away from the opposition meet attended by Rahul Gandhi. The TRS in government in Telangana is fighting the BJP there. We are those who have defeated BJP and BJP lost its deposit in all the places where they have contested against us. All opposition is all one. We are going to oppose this BJP government. After staying away from opposition meet chaired by the Congress, TMC MPs joined the protest. The party has been taking on many Congress leaders and legislators recently. जो 12 MP को सस्पेंड किया गया है, उसके खिलाफ में हम लोग आवाज उठा रहे हैं। हम लोग पूरे ऑपोजिशन के साथ हैं, लेकिन अपनी राह खुद चलेंगे। A portion parties led by Congress to meet again on Wednesday morning to decide on the future course of action, as the government has refused to revoke the suspension of 12 MPs. While Trinamool Congress will also protest against the suspension, but the party has decided to stay away from any of the meetings chaired by the Congress party. With camera person Pooja Arya, this is Arvind Gunaseka for NDTV. Meanwhile, West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee is in Mumbai where she met uh, Maharashtra Minister Aditya Thakre and she will be meeting Sharad Pawar on Wednesday. And these meetings are being closely watched for their political significance. ममता जी आज महाराष्ट्र में आई है मुंबई में आई है संजय जी और मेरी उनसे मुलाकात हुई उनका हमने मुंबई और महाराष्ट्र में स्वागत किया है पहले से एक दोस्ती रही है आपको याद होगा दो तीन साल पहले जब ममता जी यहाँ मुंबई में आई थी तब भी हमने उनसे मुलाकात की थी और एक दोस्ती का नाता ये जो नाता है रिश्ता है वो अलग है और उसी को बढ़ाने और जब मुंबई में आती है तो स्वागत करना स्वाभाविक है तो इसलिए हम यहाँ मुझे लगता है कि आज एक हमारे जो बैठक है जो ऐसे ही उनसे मुलाकात करने आए थे काफी सारे विषयों पे चर्चा हुई A meeting of great political significance taking place at the Trident Hotel in South Mumbai. This of course is the meeting between Aditya Thakre, the Shiv Sena's young leader and Mamta Banerjee, the West Bengal Chief Minister. Also present in the meeting, Sanjay Rao, Shiv Sena's MP and leader in the Rajya Sabha. Now, what was discussed at this meeting, we have some exclusive details and what we are being given to understand by sources is that Mamta Banerjee and Aditya Thakre were uh, sitting at the meeting with, along with Sanjay Rao and what Mamta Banerjee said was that while the Shiv Sena is a Hindutva party and the Trinamul Congress isn't, there is enough common ground on several issues for the two parties to work together. She also pointed out that the BJP was the common enemy. They were personally targeting families of political leaders, pointing out to how, uh, you know, Sena leaders, NCP leaders, families have been targeted. Also, Mamta Banerjee told Aditya Thakre that he was a young leader of the future and future leaders like him have to protect this country from the BJP. Mamta Banerjee's uh, sources close to uh, the Trinamool Congress chief also say that the meeting was to discuss a common agenda 
for opposition politics. And of course, uh, Mamta Banerjee told Aditya Thakre that she visited the Siddhi Vinayak temple and she prayed for Uddhav Thakre's good health and she hoped that he would remain uh, you know, a, a, a strong force in Maharashtra politics. He has, of course, shown how to deal with the BJP uh, even when they're aggressively out to pull down the MVA government, but the Sena and the NCP have been able to stick together and also keep the Congress within the alliance and keep this government going. Now, Mamta Banerjee's meeting also has a certain amount of political significance because remember, in all of this, there is a frostiness developing between the Congress and the Trinamool Congress. And while it is understood, that no senior leadership of the Congress is there in Maharashtra. The fact is that there is no meeting with any Congress leader, so to speak. So that, of course, also throws some light on the kind of opposition space that the Trinamool wants to create. After a bumper harvest, paddy farmers across Telangana are in distress because in paddy procurement centres across the state, Farmers are waiting not just for weeks but months to sell their produce. Out in the open, the food grain are being lashed by rain and going waste. This even as TRS MPs are protesting in Parliament demanding a uniform procurement policy and Telangana Chief Minister has lashed out at the central government for not buying Kharif paddy and refusing to buy Rabi paddy. Farmers say their lives are caught in the crossfire. For six weeks now, Dhanlakshmi and her husband Raju have been waiting to sell their paddy harvest at this government-run procurement centre in Bongir district of Telangana. They are still waiting. I am waiting for the first time I am waiting for the first time I am waiting for the first time I am waiting for the Malaya says just on plastic sheets to cover the paddy and on labor, he is spending up to 2000 rupees a day. He is worried he may end up with a big debt after a good harvest. I am worried he may end up with a big debt after a good harvest. Procurement officers clear the paddy for sale only if the moisture content is less than 17. But it's been raining continually in Telangana and when there is moisture, the grains sprout out, it changes colour and there are no buyers. The Telangana government says the centre had said they would procure 40 lakh metric tons, whereas the Kharif output was 90 lakh metric tons. 5 lakh tons of last rubby season is still pending purchase by the centre. In Bongi with camera person Nagraju Umasudhir, NDTV.